Just in case you couldn't tell, this video we're covering Flash. Every once in a while on Instagram, I'll throw out a a call to arms for you people to let me know what kind of tying tips videos you'd like to see. And quite a while back, somebody put Flash in there. My first instinct about a tying tips video that dealt with Flash was like, that's going to be the most boring video ever. Like, it's Flash. But then some ideas started rolling through my head, and I thought, you know, this is this is going to be good. This chair is too creaky. But I thought a flash tying tips video would be boring. I really did. And then I started thinking about like all the different kinds of flash, how to use the different kinds of flash, stacking flash. Um, and I changed my mind really, really quickly. This is gonna be a banger video. So before we get started on the video, uh, we're gonna give away the bench rings from Loon. Wait. The bench rings that I talked about in the previous video. The bench rings are gonna go to stupid phone. The bench rings are gonna go to Caleb Schmucker. Caleb wrote a book, as you can tell. <laughs> so Caleb, shoot me your address on Instagram or email or whatever you want to do, and I'll shoot you a pack of bench rings. Probably a little, probably a few extra. Just saying. Thank you to Loon Outdoors for sponsoring that whole thing. It was, yeah. Secondly, in honor of the Knuckle Deep coming out by Montana Fly Company, I'm going to be doing some limited drops of one-off colors. So follow over on Instagram uh, where I'll be putting the drops out. I'm going to tie a few dozen and I'll drop them every once in a while. I don't know exactly how often it'll be, but um, I'll just make a drop and whoever orders, orders. When they're gone, they're gone. I'll never do that color again. This is something I took inspiration from like the everyday carry guys and stuff like that. They're doing these, these one-off drops of, of coins, of knives and, and stuff like that. And I thought, man, that'd be super cool to do for knuckleheads and knuckle deep. Um, just a one-off color combo of something that I like and, and want to tie let you guys order them until they're gone and then never make them again. So yeah. So follow over on Instagram for that. And there'll be one coming within the next couple weeks and yeah, it'll be fun. In the world of flash, there are so many different kinds and textures. Certain kinds of flash reflect light better than others. And there are so many different ways to use flash and where you're going to put flash in a fly and all this really, really matters. So what I'm going to do is actually go over three different main kinds of, of flash, what is generally considered flash. I'm going to give some pros and cons for each, how to use each and stuff like that. Then we're going to move on to some different stuff that's obviously flash, but, but not considered this kind of flash. I hope you follow. So much of the time, the first thing that comes to mind when someone says flash is flashaboo. This stuff is just kind of the gold standard whenever you're talking about flash. So flashaboo is a tinsel. It, it got its name because it moves a lot actually like marabou. Flash and marabou, flashaboo, you know. Within the flashaboo realm, there are so many different kinds of flashaboo. Not, and we're not only talking colors, we're talking different styles of flash. The first style we're gonna look at is holographic flashaboo. Holographic flashaboo, is, which is actually what I have the most of, is, is not a, a single color. I mean, most of these aren't at least most of these aren't really a single color anyway. They had, they flash off of different colors, but but each strand of holographic flashaboo is made of a tiny rainbow of little dots and different colors. Whenever I use flashaboo, I tend to lean toward the holographic flashaboo. It's not quite as in your face as like the mirage that we're getting ready to talk about. Uh, it's it's not like a mirror. You know, when when I think of a mirror. Um, I think of something that is just sheer flash 
that is good for that only. And I'm not a huge fan of that. I, I like to have a little bit of holographic in there to refract light in a different way. Reflect or reflect, ref, reflect, 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 refract, <laughs> refract light or reflect light. I still don't even know which one I'm trying to use. <laughs> The vast majority of the time, I don't want like a, a mirror of just sheer blinding flash. The holographic dims it down just a little bit, for lack of better words. Um, and I, I just really, really like it. That's holographic flash boo is my favorite. Now, since we just talked about it, we might as well talk about Mirage. Mirage is basically a mirror. There's no difference. Wait, let's lay them side by side. See the difference? Mirage is like a, a mirror. It's a, it's a, like a mirror. Mirage is something that I'll use if I'm, if I'm not going to use a lot of flash in something, or if I'm going to stack flash, um, on within a tail or a body or, or something like that. If I'm going to use more than one layer of flash, I'll use this or I'm going to use this very, very sparingly, just a, just a couple strands and cause it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of flash and it's harsh flash. It, it's it, you can see this stuff in the water from a mile away. Uh, sometimes that's good dingy water and, and stuff like that. That's, that's a good thing, but I just don't want a load of this stuff in any one fly that I'm going to use a, a lot of. Another kind of flash people generally think about when they think of flash is crystal flash. And um, crystal flash is probably the first flash that I ever used in anything. The, the white ivory or whatever it is crystal flash was, was probably the first thing I ever used. You know, two strands and a woolly bugger tail and you're done, right? I mean, that's, that's generally what you do. Flashaboo, like we just went over, is a flat tinsel that is that is totally flat. There's no texture to it. Crystal Flash is a tiny, tiny tinsel that's been twisted or has a, a look like it's been twisted. So it's not a flat reflective surface. It's a, it's a multi-dimensional reflective surface. When you have this piece of paper, it is a flat piece of paper that's reflecting all the light that's hitting it at this angle. But when you twist it, the light reflects differently and has some negative areas in it. So it's not as in your face as what Flashaboo is. So Crystal Flash is more subdued. Um, it, the colors are not quite as bright. Uh, they're a little bit just, they're just a little bit dim. Not, dim is not the right word. Dim is not the word I'm looking for. The strands of Crystal Flash are a whole lot smaller than Flashaboo. Um, my first instinct when I think of crystal flash is smaller flies. That's just what I think of. Uh, your woolly buggers, your clousers, um, just stuff like that. I will tend to use crystal flash in smaller flies a lot quicker than I will flashaboo. Something else crystal flash is really good for is tying posts on dry flies. When it's tied in as a post, it gets pretty rigid, so it, it holds the hackle really well for your parachute. Um, it, it's just, it does a really, really good job of that stuff, and it has a little bit of flash to it, so you can see it a little bit easier as well. And last up, we have polar flash. This is not made by Hedron. It is. Everything's made by Hedron. <laughs> polar flash is without a doubt my favorite kind of flash. Period. It's not even close. I love this stuff. You see, I'm not a guy that likes flash just for sake of flash. I, I, I don't, I don't like that. I, you don't, it's, it's very rare that in freshwater you see fish that are just a mirror. They just aren't. Overly flashy flies just, I don't know, they just aren't what I dig. I, I don't love them. Um, I do love flash and I have flash in almost every single one of my flies. If you look at the knucklehead and the knuckle deep, they both have flash in them. I believe in using flash in ways that it helps 
a fly seem translucent or have a shimmer to it, not just flash, like flash. And Polar Flash makes that so easy. Polar Flash is actually really, really hard to explain because it's, it's a few different fibers. I, I think it's three different fibers. If I'm not mistaken, it's three different fibers. You have the main flash fiber that is a semi crinkly kind of fiber. And then you have a different strand of flash that has like a smaller filament wrapped around it. it it's, it's so hard to explain. It helps build a little bit of a bulk um, rather than just being totally flat. I'm a fan of this stuff. If I'm gonna have a tail that's only flash that I'm gonna design, typically this is gonna be it. So one of the most common ways you'll see flash tied in is by wrapping it around either your thread or the barrel of your bobbin. All this flash is synthetic, so inherently it's pretty slick. So the main thing is you just wanna make sure that you fold it over on itself and tie it in. So I have some flashaboo. You can lay it on top of the hook shank, tie it in, and then fold it over itself, just like that. Or you can wrap it around your the, the tube of your bobbin, uh, your thread, wherever. By doing this, you have the ability to slide the material up and down the thread at this point, at any angle you want. I typically go on top of the hook. So I'm gonna bring my thread to the top and then I have the ability to slide the material up and down like this. I'm gonna slide it down to the hook and then continue my strong thread wrap while holding the material up here. Now I'm gonna wrap back over itself toward the rear of the hook. All that is doing is making sure that this material is not gonna slip out. It's folded over on itself it's not gonna slip out anywhere. Now earlier we talked about stacking different kinds of flash to give a different effect, which is what we're gonna do right now. But before we do that, when you tie in any of this flash, when you cut it out of the package, you're gonna have a hard cut line. So see how it's just dead straight? We wanna taper this. We don't wanna tie this in like this because nothing is just flat. So what we're gonna do is just grab this, pull a pull a few fibers up and let some go. Just give it a little bit of a taper. It's not just a, a, a flat, hard cut. It's, it's, it's different fibers that are different lengths. So this is the Mirage that I talked about that I didn't like that much. I'm gonna start with it in this stack. Okay, so I've got my Mirage tied in. Next, I'm gonna grab some holographic flashaboo, taper it. So already we have two different kinds of flash on this. And they're all tapered, they're all different lengths. At this point, before I tie in the next clump of flash, this tail is getting a little long. And I don't wanna just cut it. I never wanna do that. Instead of cutting flash this way, you wanna shave flash. I'm just gonna come in here and never close my scissors all the way. I'm just gonna come in here and shave some of this stuff out just to make my tail a little shorter. It's gonna cut every fiber just a little bit different length. It's gonna help me with my taper. Now that tail is shorter, but it's still tapered. Never ever cut flash hard. Shave it. For the last step, I'm gonna tie in some polar flash to finish off this tail. There's so much going on within this tail. It is really, really nice. Uh, you can still come in here and shave this material if you want to. Like take some of this polar flash out. A stacked flash tail like this is something that I've been doing a whole lot of lately. You can stack different colors, different hues. Um, it's, it's something I really, really like to do. It, I'm, it's, I'm not gonna pretend like it's gonna make any difference at all to the fish, um, but man, I dig it. <laughs> 
So last but definitely not least, we you know we've covered outward flash and flash that uses a tail and uh, you know flash that you can go over in a wing. This kind of flash would be internal flash. So if you go back and watch any given big streamer tying video that I'm gonna do, you're gonna see polar chenille in almost all of them. Polar chenille is currently, and it has been for years, my favorite kind of flash to use for any given fly. In my eyes, it gives you more than just being a flash. This helps give like an internal flash. And what I mean is, you're gonna wrap this stuff on a shank of a hook. So if it's wrapped on the shank of a hook, it's gonna be covered by other material. So the other material is gonna help subdue it. It's going to not be as flashy, but it's still gonna give its color. It's still gonna give flash. It's gonna give it, it's gonna help give that translucency feel to the fly versus just being overly flashy. So much so I have like the natural colors and the non-natural colors on two totally different rings. I, I, I love this stuff. But that's about all she wrote for the flash video. Now, I'm the first to admit, there are dozens and dozens of other kinds of flash that are out there that, that I didn't go over. Uh, Shimmer Fringe and Ice Dub can be considered a flash. Like, there, there are tons and tons of different kinds of flash material. But I feel like we covered a broad scope of the major kinds of flash that we talk about that we see most often and stuff like that. If you have a, a few standby patterns that you just really like that use flash, go buy a few different colors of this other different kinds of flash and try it in those patterns and just see what you like. You may find that polar flash works better in a pattern than flashaboo or you may find that flashaboo looks better than crystal flash. It's just whatever you like. Yeah, that's about all it boils down to. Instead of just stammering on and on, I'm just going to end the video right 